Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Second video of today. This is going to be focused on Mo Man. Good Mo Man to you. So let's see what this champion's all about and whether or not he ticks boxes for me and maybe other people. So as part of the CCP, Kabam give me this champion for review. He's 200 signature, he's rank 3. And does that mean necessarily he's going to be a bit of a powerhouse? Well, not so much. I'd largely say that a 565 right off the bat is going to be the best bet to really really give you a good idea whether or not this champion can output decent damage and when you're talking about like whether or not this champion is good awakened i don't know i kind of feel it is especially considering the fact that by a higher signature you're able to gain more critical damage rating and attack rating especially while unstoppable based on missing health which is going to be really important and something that it is easy to miss off to do that. So when you go into Unstoppable to hit out. So by that logic, yeah, have an Awakened version. Yeah, keep the champion's health really low and you'll be able to see some good numbers. Not to mention the fact that this champion shrugs off debuff effects, which is when you get monster mass and you can do something with doing like a parry heavy attack to get more monster mass charges. Or you can throw in an SP1, which we'll talk about in a minute, and that will purify. I did try this champion out against Biohazard to see how the champion really kind of goes against it. And really, if you want to play this champion in an aggressive format, it isn't going to work too well because the volume of bleeds and as well the volume of poisons, it's just difficult to shrug them off and also gain the monster mass at the same time. So your play style is going to have to be very passive for that, which is annoying when you want to ramp up this champion, especially for low health pools and maximizing damage output. So there's swings and roundabouts with that. Obviously, that's a, that's a British terminology. Swings and roundabouts is like um, positives and negatives. Now, how to play the champion will be up to you. Whether or not you could do one method, you could build up to 15 monster mass, which then will switch you over into frenzy. Or you can just block a basic attack, which will then hit you into that unstoppable that then will be beneficial for you doing the Giganto Junior's Revenge, which will be gaining the uh, critical damage rating and as well the attack rating. So it kind of interworks there. So you should be then outputting some big yellow numbers. But there is another method where you build up to the 15. You then go into Frenzy. And as well, what you can do, it's up to you if you do this, where you could be like hitting out, you just about to go down to one frenzy charge. And then what you're doing is you're smashing in an SP3, which you gain 10 monster mash and become frenzied, if not on cooldown. So basically, it's like a, like a refresh. And I found that method kind of works. But there is a lot of kind of like effort to kind of ramp up the damage. I'm not saying that it's, it's a bad champion. It's a really good champion. But I just... You know, when you're when you kind of looking at a new champion, you're like, well, how much effort do I have to put into this? How much concentration on on other stuff rather than the fight playing out the way it is? And, you know, you want you want it to be as easy as possible. And I, I just feel that you're, you're concentrating on other things going on. Similar to Nova, when you're, you're kind of concentrating on ramping up stuff, I feel a similar vibe is there, but not exactly. Now, there is a mastery tie-in ability, which is gain 75% chance to resist a block break while at least one monster mass is active. Adding points into the stand your ground mastery also increases this chance. If the chance to resist a block break is raised to 100%, this ability also resists unblockable hits. Resisting an unblockable or block break removes all monster mass. And this champion with other types of abilities within it, with the unstoppable, is going to be a frustration, especially when it comes to Alliance Wars defense. And I think this is a good offensive champion, but also could be a really tricky defensive. It's kind of a, a double use of, of kind of like methods, a defensive and offensive, which is probably the reason that he's been given an attribute with a hashtag defensive tank, which, um, yeah, okay, that kind of makes it, it's like... Um, Kabam is saying it's defensive but there are some offensive characteristics which do make him good but like I said it is it's kind of hard work but it's kind of not I think in the right hands this will be a, a great champion and someone we able to kind of like output some amazing damage but I think suicide mastery setup would be a good option I don't ever put myself into suicide masteries I may do in the future but it'll probably be once I've 100 percented 6.4 that I'll be interested to do it but uh, yeah, maybe there's some other content that in the future that will mean that I want to. And maybe a champion like this would be a really good, good one to kind of put in, especially with shrugging off certain debuff effects, the positive and damage and uh, attack boost that I would get from being uh, in Suicide Masteries, those kind of things. But yeah, 
a nice little mix between defensive and offensive options. True accuracy is going to be handy against things when it comes to evades and auto blocks. So this is an effective counter for certain champions like Modok, your um, Medusas, your Spider-Mans, anything that evades and auto blocks, the list goes on. So yeah, adequate counter and, uh, and quite fun. I think this is going to be a very good quester. I'm not sure if it's going to be one of those champions you're going to say, oh, let's, let's take this into uh, Labyrinth of Legends. Um, maybe maybe in a team with abyss of legends i don't know it's it's interesting to see what people what champions people are using when it comes to abyss and it doesn't have to be just the one champion that we all kind of go oh yes we must use the fourth horseman uh, obviously people are using other options so it's interesting to see uh, who's out there for people to use but either way it's a really amazingly designed champion kabam have done a great work with animations but what are your thoughts? Put them in the comment section down below about this champion. And I think he's already gone into uh, some sort of like premium pack. So uh, check him out for what that means. And he'll be in the arena very, very soon. Final thing I want to talk about and point out is the synergies. Now, I completely forgot to mention these, but they don't really add much to the champion. Yeah, okay, while unstoppable, basic attacks are plus 50% critical hit chance. That is a good point. That is good. So keep on unstoppable, good amount of damage. But let's face it, Daredevil and Daredevil Netflix, nah, you're not, you're not going to use that in a team anytime soon unless there's a major buff. Also, Monster Mash, increase the duration of Monster Mash while frenzied by 10%. Yeah, that's helpful. It just keeps that frenzied on longer, so I do rate that. Um, and then we'll talk about the other ones that benefit other champions in another video. And then uh, we've got as well Fantastic Fiends, which is Mole Man, while frenzied, Mole Man um, attacks lower defensive ability accuracy by 50%, fighting against the Fantastic Four. So uh, that's only very specific. And I don't know if I overly rate that as a synergy because look, you're not going to you're not going to use that all the time, are you? So um, yeah, like synergies are all right. The first two are good. The other one not so much, but. There you go. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button. Check out some other content on screen now, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.